Bellevue welcomes the world. Our diversity is our strength. We embrace the future while respecting our past. Diversity in Bellevue means to me that we have all our community involved at every level. That we apply an equity lens to the decisions that we make. It's understanding and recognizing every individual's uniqueness. People value the same things. They value a good education and a safe place for their kids, a healthy environment, and a great economy. That regardless of your history, your background, what you like to eat for dinner every night, what kind of music you love, you're welcome in Bellevue and you feel at home here. These diverse perspectives enrich our overall community throughout our neighborhoods, businesses, arts organizations, and nonprofit groups. We have a lot to offer. This is largely because of our rich diversity and our commitment to supporting diversity at all levels in the city. It was really looking at ways in which we could address as government processes and policies, first and foremost, that, um, that we could improve on to ensure that folks that didn't always either interact with government, have access to government, um, and even a lot of the work that I do on the internal component, the workforce, how we're doing our hiring and recruitment, our procurement processes, that we were really looking at that with an equity lens. When I first started working here in 1994, the city, there was a feeling of like, well, what do we just have to do? Let's check the box, translate things into different languages. Let's just have one 45 minute luncheon speaker who talks about the, the value of diversity. But people weren't looking inward at, to, to really do some self-analysis. We didn't even talk about the word equity in that time. We didn't even talk about inclusion. So the most we talked about was diversity. And it was often couched in the word of cultural diversity. And it became patently clear with the different demographics that we had in, uh, going on in the community and society in general, we really needed to take the 93 plan and uh, update it and refocus it to more contemporary uh, themes. Just the fact that we're willing to look at the issues differently, um, that we're becoming more comfortable with talking about race issues uh, and addressing equity and how the system has failed some of our children. Working together to say our vulnerable populations need protecting and how are we going to protect them. We have a motion. It's been uh, seconded. It, I, I, there's a lot of support up here, so let's take a vote. All those in favor of adopting Resolution 8856 as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations to everybody who worked on this. Thank you. I'll allow, I'll allow a little bit of applause on that. That's worthwhile. Fundamentally, the support from leadership, the direction from council, the adoption of a formal plan, the structure of hiring staff to do this work, to prod departments to do this work, was essential. We couldn't move forward without it. While there were certain conversations happening about the diversity in the community, about immigrants and refugees, it wasn't happening consistently and it wasn't very well integrated. There wasn't, there didn't seem to be a strategy behind it. And so that's something that really has changed since the Diversity Advantage Initiative was voted on by council and enacted um, to be able to really operationalize some of those values and beliefs that the city has. The city has always been very focused on neighborhood centric. So. With that platform, we actually went out and had dozens of small group discussions about issues. And that's where we got the content for the plan and where we feel that the plan was more reflective, way more reflective of 
how the community at large was feeling about these issues. It was amazing because it's a 60 point plan. So in some regards, it was really overwhelming, but it also gave us tremendous latitude around the different directions that we could go in and really hone in on what the community was interested in on taking on. The diversity advantage work does not sit within three individuals. And it is a celebration of the efforts across the organization, the partnerships and collaborations with uh, community partners, because our role for the most part really is a service catalyst in this work. There's no department in charge of diversity. We're all in charge of diversity. We decided that we really needed to have um, this topic infused throughout the city. Trainings around cultural competency, trainings around race and social justice, especially focusing on things like implicit bias so we all could recognize um, what our biases were, especially related to maybe differences of, of uh, people that we served in the community. I think the best way to hear our marginalized communities really is really about gaining their trust and finding who, the, who some of the key players are that can have inroads into the folks that are, that are part of that community. No one entity in our community can hold all that's needed for everyone to thrive. It's not just city government's responsibility. It's not just nonprofits or faith communities or volunteers or the police. It really takes this coordinated effort. Everyone has a part of that puzzle. Everyone has a role to play. We really get to create programs and events, as well as lead some of the uh, community-facing efforts to increase access and inclusion within the city. So we have signature programs such as the MLK Celebrations, Welcoming Week, and then here and there we also do other programs that are really just uh, it's a way to celebrate, educate, and bring people together to learn more from each other uh, and find commonality in our city with their own culture. Well, listening is always the key. We don't often listen to people or listen to each other just speaking. So when you take the time to listen, there is so much that you will learn. One of the major programs that I have been involved with has been cultural conversations. I gave people an introduction to what it was like for me being blind and you know, how my life goes and the things I do and where I've traveled to and uh, how I work with my dog and, you know, things like that. And uh, I think it was an eye-opener for many people. By sharing your experiences, you learn so much from other people. It's encouraged me to rethink things that I've often, you know, perceived or just assumed uh, in the past. So when I'm, I'm looking at any particular project now, I uh, will look at it with my own lens first, and then I'll try on these other lenses. We get to make uh, changes every single day in, in local government to affect the community, right? So whether it is uh, increasing access for people with disabilities to starting conversations about race and equity through different conversations or summits that we host and, and sponsor. People with disabilities feeling heard and seen. Really practical examples are things like like uh, sidewalks and curb cuts being accessible, uh, wheelchair charging stations, hearing loops being installed here at City Hall and throughout, uh, throughout community centers here at the city. Courageous conversations is something I've seen here in the city of Bellevue. It takes a leader that is not afraid to number one, say this is what we're going to do. So I applaud the city of Bellevue for actually going and being intentional about those conversations. Number two, what do you learn from those conversations? Those conversations sometimes can start out wrapped around fear, but what you can get received from those conversations are very valuable. I'm, I'm really hopeful about what Bellevue can continue to do around making sure that all residents and all people who live and work here have the, the capacity to um, 
to address the fears that they have with trusted community members and people in the city, um, and also be able to feel supported in their life goals and have the quality of life that, that everyone truly deserves. I would like Bellevue to be seen as a city that looks straightforward at its problems and said, we will resolve them. What the city was able to do is it really created a platform to express that voice for underrepresented populations in the community. Diversity is not just a blanket statement of we see differences and we value differences, but that we are going to do right by everybody. Um, that those who have uh, traditionally not had access to government, um, that we will centralize individuals who haven't felt that they've been able to have that opportunity. I came to the city of Bellevue because of the Diversity Advantage Initiative, because kind of they move beyond that conversation of compliance and of following the law, and really asking the question of the law as a starting point, both in ADA and in Title VI, and moving beyond that to how do we get to equity? And that's the exciting thing, I think, both for the community and internally, is that we're really having conversations about, okay, we've, we've met that basic Compliance. Now, what more can we do? I hope that the world sees us Bellevue and um, as as leading some of this work, as leading the charge for equity, as leading the charge for becoming a more inclusive city. If we can be leaders, and if we can have uh, really from our leadership that charge of we appreciate, we welcome, we want diverse communities to thrive. That's going to be what I would want other people to see from Bellevue. If we can create something here in Bellevue, it can be spread to Redmond and Kirkland and to Seattle and everywhere else. I think that that's what's um, really motivating to me. Diversity plan is just another way of saying, who do we want to be as a community that is fair and just? And how do we get there together? I love that the plan is a plan that holds us accountable to become the community that we want to be. And that's powerful. What I've seen is, is that when people are really willing to work together and really focus on the agenda, I have seen movement and changes that are unbelievable. I'm at my most hopeful stage. <laughs>